Greetings, everyone. This is Lunch with Lincoln. I'm Trig V. Olson. I'm Joe Trippy. And, and we're here with a special edition, Democracy on the Rocks. How are you doing today, Joe? Doing great, Trig. Hey, listen, we, uh, we, we're going to start the whole show off with a segment uh, called, uh, well, Asshole of the Week, or as Trig likes to call it, Fast Hole of the Week. Trig, explain it, and let's get going. So, you know, one of the things we were joking around, Democracy on the Rocks, we were thinking, in every bar, there's that guy. And so in our, the bar that is our democracy, there is that one fast hole. Uh, for me, Joe, as I was thinking about who's my fast hole of the week, you know, there's a lot of candidates in this place. It's, it's a little bit of a seedy bar at the moment in some circles, but mine is J.D. Vance and to a lesser degree, Josh Mandel and the Republicans running in the um, Ohio Senate Republican primary. It is a complete race to the bottom. And we can get into why that is in a minute. Um, but we have a tweet from J.D. Vance. I think he took it to a new low. Um, he, had, you know, I don't know what kind of logic they teach at Harvard Law School where J.D. Vance, man of the people, went. Um, but this is just outrageous. And I had a tweet about it earlier in the week, a whole thread. Um, people should go check this out because you're seeing full on illiberal race to the bottom by a bunch of elites masquerading in that primary. And it gets to some bigger important points, which we can touch on later. Who's yours, Joe? Look, uh, I've got 208 of them, uh, <laughs> 208 bash holes uh, in the GOP house uh, who, who voted against indicting Meadows uh, and sending it over to uh, Justice Department. I mean, you know, Trig, this thing gets worse, right? It keeps growing. So you have 139 of them who vote against certifying Joe Biden as president, certifying the Electoral College votes. And and it's growing. The number keeps growing, right? We're the, now we're down to just two. We've been talking about this. There's only two, uh, Liz Cheney and, and, and Kinzinger. But 208 of them, with what with all that's coming out, still still couldn't refer anything to the Justice Department, still wouldn't, uh, you know, still voted against indicting bills. And I think part of it is how many of them not only saw the PowerPoint um, that, that, that he gave the committee, but but actually participated in it. And there's a, I'm not, we're not going to refer this indictment because it's going to expose me, the two, how many of these 208 are actually, People who participated or par were part of the conspiracy, were part of that that insurrection. But all 208 deserve to be the fast hole of the week this week. I agree with that completely. I mean, at some point, you would think these guys ask themselves, "What am I going to say in a decade when my grandkids sit me down and ask the question, what did I do? What did you do? How do you?'" And they're going to be the ones who end up living the results of the actions or inactions that these guys are taking. Um, so you, and, and I think the other thing you, uh, you know, I don't know if you ever did a cup of coffee on the Hill since we're both political guys, but I, I okay. did about six months as a staff assistant on the outside, my first job out of college. And I can tell you, even during, even having only been there at the lowest rung of the ladder for six months, you know, damn well, that when, when something like that starts circulating, everybody and their brother is, is at least wanting to take a look at it. So you've got to figure there's a ton of people who saw it. So I think that's a great one. Um, I have, I, I wanted to, for the audience, and as we were talking about this, so I have seven rules for dealing with autocrats, and then we're going to get into showing people some clips. Um, but I just wanted to review those for people who don't know, so you know what we're talking about. So seven rules are one, play the game you're in, two, always speak truth to power, three, don't hand the autocrats battering rams. In other words, don't give them the opportunity to beat you up. Um, authoritarians have to live in a truth-free present, practice zero-sum judo, the Stalin rule, and wake up every day thinking about how you're going to attack them. So we have those seven rules. Um, and we're going we're gonna to show you guys some clips. I know this is a little different than what Lunch with Lincoln usually does. We're going to show you seven, some clips, and Joe and I are going to talk about them. It's important to understand 
you could not have two people with more different backgrounds in campaigns, right? <laughs> like Joe and I, Joe and I have come together for democracy and getting to know Joe, I, I just share this. I mean, Joe is like a legend if you're on the Republican side because of all he did with literally revolutioning, revolutionizing how the internet was used. Um, and so we have two different perspectives. We're going to share this. Yeah, so we, we have the first clip, I think. Well, uh, what, Craig, I just want to come back. Look, we, we, we've been on opposite sides of a lot of battles over the years. Um, and, the, you know, it, it, and the same with uh, others on Lincoln Project uh, that I've you know, fought big battles in Senate and gubernatorial races. But the whole reason I joined the Lincoln Project is because that those those fights don't matter. There's only one fight that does matter, uh, and that's the fight to preserve our democracy against these authoritarians. And so I know we're going to go through some clips and then talk about all this. I know Trig, you wanted this one. Let's 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 get it going. I think we're uh, T minus a couple of seconds here, guys. So uh, check it out. Tune in. We're gonna live stream it. Gonna be good. Shout out Mark Meadows, an actual fighter, one of the few, a real fighter. Thank you, Mark. Kimberly. Yes, have the courage to do the right thing. Fight. Okay, somewhere in Merriam Webster's dictionary, and the definition of entitled douchebag is a picture of Donald Jr. at that moment behind the scenes. That is literally from 1 6. Um, and I don't know if people remember when that went around. It kind of pisses me off because it wrecked one of the great 1980s songs of Gloria by Laura yeah, Branigan. Absolutely. Um, just, just destroyed it. By the way, Joe, does that lady have some pipes or what? Yeah, yeah. that yes. lady can belt them out. But what's more important, and, and the reason why we bring it back up is, think about what Donald Jr. Trump Jr. says. Mark Meadows, he's one of the only ones that's fighting. They're backstage after Trump's speech. It's amazing. I, I mean, and, and then and then for, you know, Meadows now uh, doing the document dump and passing on the the uh, the PowerPoint and all that, and and at the same time, you know, uh, uh, now moving to obstruct it all to stay in the good graces of dear leader, uh, just again goes back to your. To the rules. I mean that the you know that right. these guys um, they get their power by their proximity. A lot of them to to Trump, and and therefore they are in this quagmire where the deeper they go, the more they start to cover up. It's just really kind of fascinating to see this. It's uh, I, I just think it's it, it's it just shows the depravity now of at the core of the Republican elected um, uh, authoritarian movement. And, and I mean, that's how you get to the 208 doing this. Well, and, and here's the thing is that, I mean, think about Don Jr. for a minute, right? Like the desperation and, and Liz Cheney, which we're going to get to in a second here, yeah. kind of called that out. Like he's texting multiple times to Mark Meadows and all these people because he isn't on, on the radar screen of dad. Like, and his entire his his professional existence, you know, probably where he got into college, everything's dependent upon his last name being Trump. Like all right. he knows is a vertical power structure. I, you know, and one thing that's important for people to understand. So I, both Joe and I, one of the one of the reasons why Joe and I uh, end up entertaining sometimes the other guys at the Lincoln Project when we get together is that we, Joe and I have both done a lot of work around the world in places outside the U.S. And when I was working in autocratic places like Belarus or Burma, you know, one of the things that I would always try and identify is what does that vertical power structure look like? Mm -hmm. And almost all these guys have, have their kids around them underneath, right? Um, but those kids... Sometimes there's competition between them. We saw that, but there's also a desperation, and it, it's weird. Anyway, um, but that, that, goes, we... that goes, but that goes with anywhere. I mean, even if they don't have kids, the, the people around them are desperate to stay in that, in that, in, yeah. you know, in that spotlight with the with with them. I mean, when we worked in uh, uh, worked with uh, against Mugabe in Zimbabwe, I mean, it, it, you know, you could just see all the carry-ons, all the people that hung 
around him were sort of these desperate, essentially weak. I mean, they just, they get all their, everything comes from their proximity. They, they came from their proximity to, 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 to Mugabe or the dictator, to the authoritarian right. figure, whether, it, it, you know, it, not just uh, in Zimbabwe, but you see this repeatedly around the world whenever these authoritarians step up. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this. And the other thing that, that goes on with these guys is, right, the bench usually gets pretty short pretty yeah. fast. And so they're left with their kids because they can't really completely pitch them overboard. Um, in fact, oh, okay. the, and this is just an aside, Belarus is a place where, I, as you know, Joe, I've done a ton of work. It's a passion of mine. There literally is a picture the other day of Lukashenko meeting with Putin because he desperately needs money. And he's got this son that he's been taking with him to everything who's the heir apparent sitting there with Putin. You can just see like the look on Putin's face, like, you know, what is this? So um, should we run, let's, if you want to, should we start running some clips? Yeah, I think we should. All right, let's, let's go with our next clip. Quote, can he make a statement? Ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. So she's on your team now, Joe. I know. <laughs> I know you spent a lot of time. <laughs> this would be yeah. like me watching one of the Kennedys with complete and utter admiration. Yeah. Uh, look. Uh, again, we need to embrace people like Liz Cheney who are standing up to this stuff and calling it out, and and have made a ton more brave votes and statements than, I mean, than, I mean, just only her and, and Adam Kensinger again, as I said, even though uh, they, they, they may not be there on the Voting Rights Act, which kind of bums me out, but they're, they're, they're the only true heroes that I, that I see in the Republican party right now. She's really stepped up. Um, and I think that, that, you know, you're starting to see, this having an impact on the Sean Hannity's and and others out there. I mean, her willingness to stand up and call them out, and now you're seeing back and forth between them, which I think we should get into. But no, no. I mean, look, um, we the one thing I keep saying over and over again: forget about past fights that we've had, Trig, or you know, or fast, or, or yes, I was out there, uh, God, 2004 trying to stop her dad from being reelected. I mean, as the vice president I mean, with Howard Dean uh, of all people, but, you know, so we, we've been pretty at each other, but look at this point, it's, it's our, it, we all have to come together, build a pro-democracy coalition from Liz Cheney all the way over across the, you know, as far as you can go either way uh, in both parties and bring people together uh, and hope that enough of Americans wake up to this, uh, to the real threat, uh, and and that we can grow that pro democracy coalition to stop these these thugs from taking over in 2022 and and worse 2024. So you know you I think this this might be useful because I know on your side there's been some of this. You know Liz Cheney does not come from my wing of the Republican Party. I come from a very libertarian, soft power um side she comes from much more of a hard power neoconservative side right um and it, the truth of the matter is i'd like to be in a position within the party to have those fights with her about things that are strategic before we go do battle with the democrats but we don't have that space we're all on the same team i would point out in the context of the rules you know what she did with reading out those texts was literally a master's class if you think about the rules she's she's playing the game we're in she is completely zero sum she is she is speaking truth to power the power that did in in her own party which she still is running in a primary in wyoming which all of us need to get behind her where we can um so she's got that she's she's literally forcing sean hannity to talk about the past so, and he can't do that. Right. Um, and yeah. she's practicing the Stalin rule simply by being on the committee. So it, it was a thing of beauty. She's, so, she, she's a boss. <laughs> so, for, for all of you who are with us, you got, yeah, I know that the, the producers of this show were really excellent. Uh, we're, we're really worried that 
the Trig and I could go off into tangents and, and talk instead of going through the clips in time. So, so uh, uh, I, and, and by the way, they were right about that. Right. Uh, was, uh, good caution. Uh, so let's get to the, let's get to the next, next clip. Cause I think it, it gets to your, 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 your point even more Trig. Where is the outrage in the media over my private text messages being released again publicly? Do we believe in privacy in this country? Apparently not. Privacy. Privacy. <laughs> and you're right. She does, she she pulls that stuff up and and Hanny didn't want to talk about this stuff because that's gonna put him in, in trouble with the with the boss, with the, the guy yep. up the top, the 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 you, you know, so uh it's really fascinating to watch that like just sort of like trying to get off the hook, you know, it's kind of that fish that's sort of like trying to wiggle and get off, the, get off the hook. What's your- You take? know, the thing about it is, so it, it, this is a much bigger scale with much bigger stakes. It's only democracy in the United States that she's doing this in the context of. But you know in the campaign when you stick the other side with the Hobson's choice, where they have absolutely no good Whatever whatever path they choose, it's a disaster, right? <laughs> and, and you know how it is in the room. Everybody is sitting there going, oh, God, they stuck us good. You got to just figure somewhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the catacombs of Fox News, as she started reading those, that his executive producer and the people on his team were like, oh, shit, she's going there? Like, how do we... No matter what we say, we're hosed. Um, I don't know. Did you see he's going on vacation now? Oh, I bet he is. <laughs> no, he is. It just happened. He just, it just happened. It was always, it was a long scheduled one, but it just, uh, I suppose, yeah. it, just, it just sort of like, hey, he's off the air for a while. Be interesting. Well, and here's the thing. Like, think about, think about some of the other dynamics going on there. If you read, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that's been written, you got Chris Wallace, who's a real journalist. I know, yeah. I know one of the things about, that, that, like on my side, there's people who just are like, they can't stand Chris Wallace. I'll tell you, and I bet this is true for Joe, when you're running a U.S. Senate campaign and you know that, that, that you would know that your candidate was going to go on a debate on Chris Wallace's show with their opponent, you knew that one, it was going to be a fair debate, and two, you knew you better buckle up your chin strap and do your homework and, yeah. and, 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 and practice. I mean, I once built for a candidate with some other guys a full replica of his set so we could spend two weeks practicing. Yeah. Um, no. He's leaving. He doesn't want to be there. Yeah. No, I, I look, I, I worked uh, election nights every night, every election night for seven years with Chris Wallace. And, man, oh, he was know. as tough. No, no. But he was as tough. He was wonderful to work with. But he was as tough on the Demo on me if, if he called, you know, would call me out on air, um, or as he was with Carl Rove. Um, you yeah. know, if he, if he was he was just uh, as uh, a real uh, one of the. There are real or were real journalists at, at Fox for a while, uh, but they tended to all there are very few left, and with him leaving. It, you know, you can't, there, there aren't even, you know, single fingers on your hand that you can count anybody left there, I think. No, I think it's, uh, it's Brett Baer. Yeah, that's like Brett Baer. That's what it is. Uh, and, I, and I'll tell you, one of the things that, that, that if you see, you know, the whole thing about, you know, uh, illiberal kryptonite is the past or the future. If you watch when, when Brett's doing interviews of, uh, and I've made this comment on Twitter, and put a few up, but when he's interviewing the Jim Jordans and all those people, he's using that, which is straight real journalism. I mean, he's, yeah. he, but but the rest of them, their entertainment division is just off the rails. Yeah, and that's what it all, is. It's political entertainment. Yeah, it's all. But but Chris Wallace was a massive loss uh, uh, for them, uh, and I, I'm really happy for him um, that he's moved on. Uh, but I can't say enough about uh, the, the years I worked with him and what I thought of him and how good he really is. And he doesn't deserve the crap from either side because he he took it to both of them. Uh, it was right. My mind was around. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so you have we've, we've talked a little bit about what Hannity's doing. We've talked a little bit about Liz. Um, 
we we we've cited Don Jr. Um, but you 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 want to talk about the future of the autocratic movement on the right? Uh, well, and have I, mean, a clip look, on I think one of the things one of the reasons we talk about democracy on the rocks is because look, this is the fight here is uh, autocracy versus democracy. I mean, that's what what the real fight is. We talk about well, what's happening with BBB with Build Back Better or or you know, or will they come to an agreement on on reconciliation? And and you, you get caught up in all, a lot of people do. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, progressives are upset because they haven't gotten that bill passed yet. And I keep saying to to everybody, regardless of whether you're progressive, moderate, independent, a former Republican, um, or or somebody that you know is, is willing to understand what the real threat is. The real threat here is to our democracy. Um, and it's not just here, but uh, you know, autocracy is on the march um, everywhere. Uh, it, it has gone on the march a lot stronger everywhere uh, with Trump's uh, uh, you know, basically focus on, on hanging with autocratic leaders and, and being their fan, you know, a fanboy. Uh, to, to Putin and the others, but um, I think so. I think highlighting that it's democracy uh, uh, versus autocracy, and reminding people that autocracy is on the march, and and each week where where we can, uh, if we keep doing this, um, call out you you know uh, either people who are are aiding and abetting autocracy or heroes out there who are uh, who stood up to it and and uh, and uh, made a, a difference. Um, I don't know if we have uh, a, a clip on um, what DeSantis is doing uh, uh, to pressure professors out there, but I thought you you wanted to to bring up something about that. Yeah. So I mean, what. When we think about what's going on here, and I, I make this point to sometimes with, you know, I consider myself a conservative. I don't consider myself a Republican anymore, probably a libertarian more than anything. But when I speak to I'm, people I'm who are Republicans, huh? I'm working on you to bring, bring you over to, to the, the other side when this is yeah. all over. We, we, we won't be having to debate marginal tax rates. We can talk. No, we won't. We won't. But uh, or or internet sales tax yes. for that matter. Yes. <laughs> um, but but uh, you know, one of the things that I say is that there's, and I say this to reporters too, who ask. There's this notion. Well, if Trump goes away, right? And it's taken as an article of faith by a lot of Republican strategists. If Trump goes away, the problem goes away. But in truth, yeah, when you happen. see the kind of extremism that we have. And when you see this descending into illiberalism, it becomes a race to the bottom and it becomes a race to outdo the other guy. And so, you know, when I cited at the start, the Ohio Senate primary, it's just the best example of what happens and what the Republican primary would be like if Trump doesn't run. And that will be, you know, Joe says, if you say something crazy, right? And I'm running against you in an environment where people want crazy at the competitive marketplace. I'm going to double down on crazy and I'm going to go more crazy. And it just becomes this race to the bottom. And I really think if you look at where Fox is, Fox is a good case study of this, right? Because Fox, when you were there in, in or during the Bush years, and I know a lot of people in our audience probably weren't watching Fox or despised Fox then, you really hate it now. Well, you hate it because of this evolution. They went from, we're trying to be fair and balanced about a real grievance, I, I would argue as a conservative, right? You, you might say it wasn't, um, that there wasn't a lot of fair and balanced alternative to when Trump comes along, we've got to have just pure propaganda because we've got to keep the leader happy. And, and right. that's that evolution. So they went from fair and balanced to, well, I don't know what their slogan is now, but it, it gets to that nut. Well, we're going to disagree a little bit because, look, having uh, uh, spent a lot of time, they there there were two divisions. There was a yeah. news division and in, in an opinion entertainment division, um, and so there were people, Shep, Shep Smith and and others yeah. uh, uh, who who 
did journalism and news um, and try to do fair and balanced for their news program. Um, right. But the reality was the the opinion uh, had all the prime time and 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 you know most of the big time slots were all were all opinion. Now you know, where we do agree is it's all forget. There is no news division anymore. I mean no. they, they may say that there's Brett Bear showing. There's, there's Brett Bear, Bear showing. Yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. There's almost nothing that you could call call it you know no. journalism on the channel anymore. It's all opinion and entertainment. And as you said, I mean, it's all propaganda really now. Um, so, you know, it just shows you how, that you know, look, um, one of the things I think that's been going on and people don't really understand is the outrage machine that this has created, uh, that Trump has, I mean, a lot of the pieces were put in place and billions were spent by billionaires out there, uh, Murdoch and others to, to create these platforms. But when you look at Breitbart, New, you know, Newsmax, uh, OAN, um, Fox News, this apparatus has been building and grow and, and declining into a propaganda outrage machine for decades. And there's yeah. no, there's nothing like it um, on on the you know on the pro democracy, pro democratic uh, uh, you, you know uh, uh, side. I mean, there you know Lincoln Project. Midas touch it. So there's groups out things that have happened that that are starting to get content and move messages, but that's why I think the one of the reasons I keep talking about the pro democracy coalition is getting people out there who who watch this to spread it. I mean to move it out there to get to give it uh, more of a hearing so people understand that this is democracy versus autocracy. To, you know, create sort of a a comms core out there to fight the disinformation, to fight these guys. Um, and that's why I think, you know, again, reminding people that autocracy is on the march. We've got to be democracy on the march. And that's not just, but, you know, it's it's everybody out there. It's it's every group out there joining together in a, in a, in a pro-democracy coalition to do battle with us. Well, and I mean, you know this from working around the world. When I would get asked to go into countries, you know, to oppose people like Lukashenko or, I mean, a slew of them, Mugabe, any of these guys. You know, one of the things that I did was build coalitions. And, and we would literally invite anyone who came in, and I would say the only litmus test for being here is not how many resources you bring or anything, what you where you stand on European integration or whatever. It's what matters is the question of, do you believe that we're going to have that you'll have free and fair elections and a peaceful transition of power and those cornerstones of democracy. And if you do, you're welcome here. And that's, we have to build that. Uh, well, we do. That gets us to the toast of the week, my friend. Yeah. Who's you? So mine is, mine is pretty easy. It's Liz Cheney. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I as I said, I come from a different wing. Um, I, I will say also having met Liz Cheney, she is very much her mother's personality um, rather than her dad's. Um, she may have her dad's though intensity, clearly. Um, but she, um, you know, it's funny. I tell people who haven't met her on the Democrat side, if you were to pick a Republican to sit next to at a dinner party, Liz Cheney would be probably near the top of your list. It's a little bit like I tell Republicans, like Rachel Maddow would be at the top of my list to sit next to just because she's fun. Um, but so who is yours, Joe? It's it's Liz. I, I, look, I think, again, um, it's important. No, uh, 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 we've talked about this through the okay, show. Okay, it's the, Ooh. listen, people have to understand it might be the end of the world as we know it somewhere. Yeah. Fritz Mondale is flipping over in his grave. Yeah. <laughs> Joe yeah, is no. now on team with John Cheney. Yeah, no, no, no. I love I, it. Yeah, I, I mean, I have. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I've been on the other side of that fight all along. Uh, but, you know, those were fights where uh, we could disagree about what was best for the country, but you were pretty sure. Uh, I was always certain that um, uh, that you were doing what you thought was best for the country. And I think it's clear now when the line is autocracy, so obvious what's going on uh, within the party, how Trump owns it. Um, that uh, we, we've, I, I mean it when I say, you know, a, a 
pro, broad pro-democracy coalition from Liz Cheney to Dick Gephardt to, to I mean, to, to, to AOC. I mean, whatever it takes to bring everybody in. Um, and some people aren't going to be happy with some of that. Oh, I can't no. believe Liz Cheney. But it's too important. Uh, we can go fight yeah. about all the other stuff. If, if we lose the, um, the democracy to these thugs, um, you're not going to get, uh, you, you know, infrastructure is going to go to the guy. A lot of bi billions of dollars in infrastructure is going to go to the guy that's that's Trump's best friend uh, or, you know, somehow aligned with some business interest. I mean, it's just it's not going to be, um, you know, people need to even people who are for this, I think need to start thinking about what it would really what what it really going to be like if they succeed uh i'm not going to let that happen it's why i i, I actually pl had planned on retiring um <laughs> after the doug jones race in 2017 but um now i'm al pacino it's like in the godfather every time you I can't you, can, you, you got it, I, you know what i'm really glad that you didn't because yeah. one well, of my favorite parts cool. about being working on the lincoln project is is having gotten to is getting to know joe having gotten to know joe be, having joe as a friend joe we got to do this we got to do this more often this has yeah. been fun i this think if so people good. enjoyed it let us know on twitter uh or facebook um and let's stand up and and fight this fight every day we got to get up and think about how we attack that vertical and we need everybody on board doing what yeah. they can to help yeah so, join yeah. us uh, and, and also, uh, Lunch with Lincoln will be back on Monday. So uh, join us there. To join. Uh, Y'all get, get read back, which yeah. you may be happy yeah. to yeah. probably Make be you happy very happy. <laughs> right. Exactly. I, I know that, you know, we should do this sometime where we drink, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should do this more in a happy drinking. hour than, than the, the lunch period. But we'll, we'll see if we can get that going. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thanks, guys. See ya.